And then what do Bam. you know? Goes. Bam. Tropical <laughs> storm, Julia, and really going to kind of plague a North Florida home. Hey guys, welcome back to our channel. Um, last week you guys saw that we were um, sitting in our car filming a video. I don't think that we really explained why, um, but this last week has been um, a pretty big disaster to say the least. <laughs> I mean, it's been fun and we've got to, um, we had a lot of fun during it, but there was definitely some points of um, uh, distress. distress. <laughs> So why were we sitting in a car filming the video for last week's video? Um, because we um, were staying at an Airbnb like you guys knew. Um, it was really cute. I thought it was really cute. Um, I thought it looked like a little cottage. And and it had uh, bed bugs all over. So we went to go film um, some parts to our video. And we were sitting in the guest bedroom where we're, we were filming. And there's freaking little tiny bed bed bugs on it so we're like oh god this is not the room that we've been staying in oh my gosh there's a they're right there do you see them they're crawling there's two of them oh there's there's oh i'm like freaking out right now so you know these were full-grown like oh, adult giant too. bed bugs and they were crawling all over the mattresses and on top of the uh the comforters uh -oh. And, you know, we Sorry. didn't really know what they were at first because I don't, you know, I thought that bed bugs, like, live in the mattress and, you know, hide and they come out at night. I didn't know that they're so, they're bold enough to start crawling on the comforter. And to think, because we, we knew in the Florida that there's bugs, so we're like, not like that, but like, we were like, oh, there's already geckos in the house. <laughs> and we're like, oh, okay, yeah. whatever. Yeah. <laughs> and then me and Austin go to search, like, the other bed to see, because I got, like, bitten up by these bed bugs. Like, I literally had rash is everywhere on me. It was disgusting. So we went and we went and searched the um, other room and while we were looking, Austin's like on his side of the bed, like mm -hmm. pulling off the sheet and then I go and like, you know how like there's um, on a sheet, it's like kind of springy. Um, so I take it back and it like shoots off and there's this dead cockroach. This is crazy. I'm freaking out, man. What the heck is that? It flies up and it's disgusting. Oh my gosh, this cockroach was this big. It was a dead cockroach in the sheets by our heads. It was so gross. So we were like, I'm getting the heck out of this place. Like we called like the lady. The lady was like, like was like, oh, just wash them. Just dry the sheets. It should kill the bed bugs. Yeah, and we're like, no, we're getting the heck out of <laughs> we're here. We're getting the heck out of here. And then, the, like, her son came over and, like, checked everything. And he's like, oh, yeah, yeah, okay. And I showed him the cockroach. And then he leaves. And I go back in there. And I'm like, Austin, where's the cockroach? The kid stole the cockroach as evidence. <laughs> our evidence. And, like, luckily for he me. He took the evidence. He took the evidence. And I'm like, are you serious? But I already got that on film. So, um, we got the heck out of there. We had to leave, like, our new pillows that we just bought. We left all of our food because we're like, oh, we didn't have a place to stay. Um, and then Airbnb um, said we couldn't stay in another um, Airbnb for at least seven days because we were contaminated. So we had to leave the place and repack, wash, and dry all 160 pounds of clothing. And that took forever. It was like six hours or something. Um, it was a long time. Yeah, and after that we went to the nearest hotel, which happened to be on the beach, mm -hmm. and they ended up upgrading us to like the nicest room there. I guess they felt bad for us or something like that. Mm -hmm. So we got this awesome corner unit overlooking the beach, and it was really, really cool. So yeah, that was really nice. The lady there was awesome. Um, so we ended up staying there an extra night, and then afterwards we went to another hotel that was cheaper because now we had to pay for it. All right, so number one rule when checking into a place, check for bed bugs. Bed bug check completed. <laughs> so we went to know, um, checked into another hotel, stayed there for I think a night, and then the next day we had the boat survey. We were so excited to get it done, um, to get on with the process of buying that boat that we showed you guys, which mm -hmm. we were 
like I said, so excited about. We were already so emotionally invested in it. And that uh, yeah, that bit us in the butt. Literally. So we literally <laughs> bit us in the butt. We met the surveyor on the boat, and uh, yeah, it turns out that the boat was not nearly what we thought. You know, it looked really pretty. It was cleaned up really nice. Mm-hmm. Everything looked really good on it, um, but there were problems. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so um, one of the major issues that really like made us um, make our final decision was because um, of the teak decks, which we were originally concerned about, but mm-hmm. we didn't know the extent of the damage that was done to them. Um, the teak decks were um, completely rotten underneath um, on the starboard side, mm-hmm. um, where the chain plate, because originally we were worried about the chain plate as well, um, because there was little water damage, but they made it seem like it wasn't a big deal. Yeah, and it turns out that the uh, so the the, the screwed in teak decks, where every screw hole there wasn't a patch on the top, it leaked, mm-hmm. destroyed the core on the deck, which went down to the bulkheads in the boat, and was causing like significant hole damage and structural issues with the boat. That was you couldn't really tell by like the naked eye. Like we we mm-hmm. went in there and we thought it looked beautiful, but you know we could see like little stress cracks and stuff yeah. on the uh, chain plates, but. It wasn't, to us, it didn't seem like that big of a deal until the surveyor was like, hey guys, this is going to cost, you know, $100,000 to fix. And I wouldn't even think about sailing this thing anywhere long distance or yeah. anything like that. And so we were like, you know, you know, you have to know when to call it quits. Yeah. And so we were really emotionally invested into it. But we learned our lesson, um, but our surveyor was awesome. He, um, he only charged us for... Well, like the first third of the survey yeah so he like gave like he gave us a deal like he felt bad and like kind of like helped us out a little bit so he was awesome the owner was even nice and he was planning on doing the decks himself and all that stuff so it was no big deal to him but for us we were you know we didn't we don't have that money to do that and we were not that we don't have and we don't have six you know six months to a year to replace all these decks and we're not very handy in that regard i mean we've tried to do a little project (laughs) one time we tried to do our wood floors and that just turned out horrible but we definitely learned our lessons with uh, getting really excited, and then we knew it too. We were like, we we were already so emotionally invested in it, so we would like look up yeah. over these things that we saw, and we didn't. We got too excited about it, and like so, yeah. When you're looking at a boat, definitely don't get too emotionally attached to it because you'll definitely look o- overlook. Um. What we did is we decided, hey, let's go. There's another boat in Georgia, mm-hmm. and we're like, let's go make the five hour journey up to Georgia. It's not that long. And what happens? Well, the, the morning we wake up to leave, there's a tropical storm that's coming in, and it's hitting specifically where we're going. It's not like I'm talking about a 20 mile region out of all of North Florida. It's hitting that like exact area. Yeah. And we're like you got You have to be kidding me. Like so, we went anyways, and we're like, let's just see how it was. And, and good thing that the uh, the most of the storm passed by the uh, end of the afternoon when we arrived mm-hmm. and uh when we saw the boat it was it was awesome what was concerning to me is that like buying an older boat you are going to run into these issues of you know do they have teak decks are they you know have they ever been replaced like when you're looking at a boat that's like in the 1980s or mm-hmm. whatever um they're great built boats but they might have a little bit yeah. more issues on so after um seeing the flying dutchman and all that stuff we were i was nervous like looking at another older boat even though like the i fell in love with like the traditional like sailboat like look like the older traditional um sailboat look so i was nervous looking at this boat but it was beautiful. I mean, it definitely needs some love and care for it, like some good hard sweat. Yeah, it was just <laughs> what the deal with it was that the owner uh, has just let it sit in the marina for three years. He hasn't, you know, started the engines. He hasn't started anything on the mm-hmm. AC, the generator, nothing. He hasn't cleaned it or anything like that. So it's it's wear and tear has taken an effect on the boat. So we just have to, you know, scrub it, clean it, wash it, mm-hmm. and we're gonna maybe repaint it. So yeah, we'll see. So we put an offer in and we're still negotiating, so I guess you guys will have to see um, what happens in our next video, so um, definitely stay tuned and wish us luck again. Um, Hopefully this time it goes a little bit better than last time because um, we're trying not to get our hopes up, but you know, it's a little bit hard. Um, but I think in the meantime, we might look at a couple other boats Mm -hmm. um, just to keep our options open and not be so like slim. Um, yeah. but it is hard. Like when you find the boats that you like, it is really hard to, 
Um, control your emotions. Control your emotions and also look at other boats. Like when we found the Flying Dutchman, it was so inside, it was so amazing, and it, the look of it was beautiful. Um, but when I started thinking about it more, and once we got on the survey and stuff, and things were falling, like being wrong with it, I realized that like the cockpit, I couldn't live with the cockpit. Like it was way too small. Like when you when you want to live on a sailboat, you want at least for me, one of the big things was I wanted a big cockpit that I could like sleep outside when awesome sailing or vice versa, um, and just because that's where you're gonna hang out. So on the Celestial that we um, just looked at, it had a big cockpit it was huge it had the big back and um the inside was just a little it wasn't as open and roomy as the first boat but it you know it's still a 48 foot boat and it was nice it was big yeah. i mean it had it made up for it in the aft cabin which was had mm -hmm. the queen bed and yeah bed. it was a big cabin in the back and um it had its own separate little shower mm -hmm. um i think it made up in other areas for um you know yeah it's all about compromise like mm -hmm. we said you always have to compromise in some aspect. You know, the first boat we compromised with the cockpit. Mm -hmm. This boat we're co compromising with the lack of, you know, interior space, it, like in the kitchen and stuff, like original. So, yep. it's just one of those things. So yeah, um, wish us luck, guys, and uh, stay tuned to the next video to see what happens. Maybe we'll get this boat. Maybe it'll fall through. Yeah. We don't really know. We'll see. <laughs> so stay tuned.